Good morning. morning. It is just coming up on 5.40 in the morning, and our goal for the day is to get from here in San Cristobal to Santa Cruz Island, or rather actually Vulture Island, because that is where the airport is located. And we need to fly back to the mainland today, to Quito. So none of how we're gonna do this is gonna be new for you, but just in case you need a reminder, this is how we're gonna get there. We planned on showing you a bus ride about now. However, the last bus to the airport leaves at 9.30, so instead, we have to take a $25 taxi. And just like five hours later, we are back at Seymour Airport here on Barsha Island. Now it's time to go spend some time at the lounge. So after having spent a bit of time here, I now rescind the air quotes. I think the reason why I was a little bit uncertain at first is because prior to coming here, we'd read some pretty damning reviews about it. But honestly, after having been here for a while, I don't really understand what the real problem is. It seems perfectly fine. So with that, this is definitely what we would rate as a bona fide lounge, and so therefore it's definitely deserves a bona fide lounge rating. So with that, we are going to rate this lounge, which is the VIP lounge on Baltra Island Airport. As always, we start with food, and I think the food is pretty decent, but I didn't try as much as Nick, and he didn't think it was as great. By far, the standout food was the fish, but for such a small lounge, the fact that they have quite a dessert selection, apples that you can take away, a variety of rolls, and bread with butter and jam. The fact that they even have four hot dishes, I think that this is pretty decent. So with that, we're rating it a five out of 10. One of the places that this does fall down on a little bit is the drink selection. Don't get me wrong, in terms of your basics, then it does cover the majority. So you do have soda fountains, you've got your water, your tea, your coffee, and pretty much most of your soft drink options, including a couple of locally freshly squeezed juices, which are pretty decent. However, on the booze front, if you want any of that, then none of that is included. You do have to pay extra. And annoyingly, you can't seem to find a price list anywhere without actually going up to the bar and asking, which seems a little bit odd, but you know, it is what it is. Based on the one price that is quoted though, as a kind of happy hour deal, then it's apparently $15 US for two cocktails, which does seem like quite a lot for alcohol that in most other lounges should be free. That, plus the fact that there isn't anything portable that you can take away with you, means that we're only giving this one a four out of 10. As far as cleanliness goes, we're giving it an eight out of 10 because it seems pretty clean and the staff come around pretty regularly to pick up your dishes comfort from you definitely have a huge amount of seating available to you i personally think that if you stay in these seats for long enough then parts of your body will go numb but rachel seems to find it a lot more comfortable than i do so we balanced out our rating on this one to give this one a seven as far as amenities goes it has really good wi-fi i love that there's an outdoor patio that looks out onto the runway there are charging ports, there's a TV where this does lose some points is that there are no showers here. So with that, we're giving it a six out of 10. And that gives this lounge a total rating of 30 out of 50, which considering our expectations when we were going into this is 
pleasantly surprising, actually, even though this does land it in the bottom of the mid-table category. But after enjoying all of this, it is time to board our flight. So let's go. We've just arrived in Quito and we are staying with the same lovely hosts that we stayed with when we first arrived here. So there's nothing new to show you. No, but there definitely will be something new to show you when we move on to an all new country. So we will definitely be taking you along for that. But since there is nothing else for us to show you today, we will catch up with you tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning! We are back at Quito Airport this morning to fly on to our next country. But before we do that, we get to check out the International Lounge here. And if the domestic lounge is anything to go by, I'm pretty excited. Let's go check it out. Today we're going to be rating the Sala VIP Lounge in Quito Airport in the International Terminal. On the food front, there is a slightly lesser selection than I think we expected because definitely with the domestic lounge, then there's the range of food that was available to you is absolutely fast. However, of what they do have, it is absolutely divine. It provides some local options as well. And so it still provides you with some very good bang for your buck. So with that, we're going to give this one a minute. In terms of drinks, this ranks up there with the best that we've experienced on our world travels. You can get cocktails made, you can get wine, you can get beer juice, soft drinks, water, all kinds of coffee. The only thing that's strange is that it's a limit of two alcohol beverages per boarding pass. So with that, we're giving it a nine out of 10. Cleanliness wise, when you come into this lounge, then definitely it looks pretty spotless. However, the regularity of the staff coming around to clear up after you is a bit less than other lounges that we've experienced. So therefore, we're gonna give this one an eight. In terms of comfort, this lounge is absolutely unbelievable. It is huge, so there is plenty of space to spread out. There is a massive variety of seating options, whether it's tables, chairs, couches they even have a terrace outside the only issue with the terrace is that there's no view of the runway or anything it's just a construction site but this place is super comfortable 
So with that, we're rating it a 9 out of 10. By way of amenities, and this definitely gives you more or less everything that you can possibly need. So there are showers, there is very good Wi-Fi in here as well. There's a business centre over by the door to the outdoor terrace, and the outdoor terrace is something that we've only experienced in Ecuador around this moment now, so that's very unique. Otherwise, there's rest areas, TVs, charging ports. This is very, very well kitted out for pretty much everything you could possibly need from a lounge while not providing you with a huge number of mod cons. So with that, we're actually going to give this one a 10 8. And the grand total for this lounge is a 42 out of 50, which places this at the high end of the middle ground lounges or the low end of the top lounges. So overall, it has been a very pleasurable experience but now we have to go board our flight. We've just arrived and we heard about this one app called InDrive, which apparently is a similar kind of offering to Uber, Grab, and a bunch of other ride shares, but apparently it's a bit cheaper. So we're giving this one a go. Hopefully it all works out. Typically, this isn't our style to take an Uber or taxi because we're backpacking and normally it's so much more expensive. But it seemed very complicated to get from the airport. There was maybe a bus option, maybe a metro option possibly had to switch terminals or take a bus to the main bus station or to the metro. I think this is one of the most difficult parts of coming to a new place is just getting your bearings and figuring out where you are. So the chances that we actually take maybe public transportation back to the airport when we leave is significantly higher but sometimes it's nice when you arrive to just have a direct ride to wherever you're staying and so let's hope this works out. We've just arrived to our hotel, Hotel Republica, and this place is massive. I'll come back this way and show you guys the bathroom in a second, but look how big this main bedroom area is. Just so you know, this has cost us $91.56 US for four nights here in Panama City. We have a fridge, we have a dresser and then of course as I'm coming back over here like I promised a desk area the wardrobes and then here's the bathroom again it's absolutely massive sink mirror toilet and then around here a shower with a shower curtain which is always good to see it's very long amazing I don't know what else we could ask for and somehow this gets better. Just check out this view. We can also confirm that the in-drive experience worked absolutely perfectly. One thing we didn't quite realize, but this has happened with other rideshare apps such as Grab, is that it doesn't include toll fees, so that ends up being a little bit extra onto the price that you agree. But the overall price still ended up being 13 US dollars to take us door to door. Which, considering the fact that Uber was going to charge us 20 is a heck of a saving. So, can only be happy with that. But that is all we have planned for today. We are just going to chill out for the evening and we'll be back at it and raring to go tomorrow. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.